penciled in uh, some of my fur areas and which directions my fur is going. So we're going to break this down into several uh, smaller videos because I don't want to, you know, put up a 50 minute video. So we're, we'll keep an eye on the time and I'll go for half an hour in each stint. So I've set my Optima at heat setting 3 with this large spade shader which I've found is brilliant for uh, creating fur. And the first place I want to look at is around the mouth. So we'll take a little look at trying to define this nose area more. Now I may need to turn my heat setting down. Let's start off usually at the three mark, which is a medium heat. And I can adjust things from there. So let's take a look underneath the lip of our wolf. Let me zoom him right in. case we've obviously got the top lip and you remember the saying uh, I've said many times from the great pencil artist Daryl Tank where there is less light it must go darker this is one of those areas This, for example, here, under this nose, this fur is all coming round, you know, just slightly curling round. It's going to be darker because of this snout that sits in front of it. It's a lower point of the dog's face, so we want to definitely darken up this area but not go over the top dark using the burn low and slow method that I always practice myself gradually building uh, to the tones that you want to show. Now I notice with the mouth there's a there's a few different uh, areas to it. We've got like a gummy area off to the side. We've got a dark patch running here. And then we've got all sorts of white fur and everything coming out. All this fur is all running off. Like, you know, first of all, in this angle direction, then underneath, it'll straighten off a little. But we really want to get this mouth with some pop. And I have by no means uh, got there yet. So we'll just work away for half an hour and see how things progress. It's quite difficult to um, get into the zone when you're filming and you're talking about what you're doing you know, a lot of the time when you put it on time lapse it's so much easier to get yourself into the zone but then that wouldn't be a teaching video would it so you will have to bear with me 
as I try and talk my way through what I'm doing. So here, this is down the like the side of the mouth area before it meets our like sort of cheek because there is a cheek there is if this was like a Frenchy dog you would have a cheek area there and then the fur you see lightens off so I'm going to turn this pen down to two and a half because I really want to be adding lighter fur here I don't want to be at medium heat I want to be a slight touch below that heat so I can build my way into the right tones when you zoom in on this wolf wow you do, you you you're totally blown away, aren't you, by the detail? It is just absolutely superb, the detail of this wolf. What a beautiful uh, image somebody captured. Sadly, I don't feel like I've done his eyes justice. He's probably eyeing up a meal <laughs> and, you know, gazing at it, watching, waiting, ready to strike. Sorry, I've got a drink with me as you get a dry mouth when you talk a lot. So at some point here, our mouth and our flocks meet. Now I noticed there was a few um, whiskers that I hadn't captured when I laid my transfer down. I mean, you can add whatever whiskers you want to add there is there's no right way no wrong way I noticed there are two crisscrossing each other when I'm burning at this low heat I can just mark them out and I'm not going to do any damage whatsoever to my artwork And if I don't like it, I've not overcommitted myself to anything. So I'll just mark them in lightly for now. They would need to go much darker. I will need to really darken up underneath the main gummy area of the wolf but now we want to start showing his lighter locks coming off these will have to be darkened but not as dark as your darkest darks. But we can't leave them like super light, otherwise you, you wouldn't see them. So I'm going to work this little area here to start with where there is a dark spot and the hair moves off in this direction
this is where the burn low and slow method really comes into its own as you're not quite sure you know of how it's going to look how it you know how it's going to feel you can just mark away very gently until you start to feel the shapes and the curls of the fur as they come out from this beautiful fox uh, wolf fox <laughs> it's not a fox is it you'd eat a fox for breakfast this wolf Now I've put several steps in on my wolf where I want to show where there are different tiers. I've just roughly marked them in with a pencil like clumps of fur. And I think I will be using my uh, micro skew when I really zone in and get into like the super fine detail. Don't forget you do not have to go to this level of detail. That is totally your choice as it is your artwork made from your creative mind so do whatever is comfortable for you if you would like to explore you know crazy in depth uh, artwork then do so If you'd rather be happy with, you know, just adding shadows and things, then you can do that. I picked this particular spot because there was a really dark area in there. But then we had all this white fur that lays over the top of it and starts to go down the beard. Let me just see this other guideline. Now, like I said, you are never going to get every single hair exactly to the reference picture. So don't even stress yourselves with that. This is your piece of original artwork. The wolf itself is there purely for guidance purposes, you know. Unless a client is paying you to make an exact image where you do have to be more precise, then you've got artistic license to do whatever you want. That's the beauty of art, you know. We're we're all different we all have our own unique styles every single wolf from our study group will look completely different to each other seen some awesome work from the study group members at the end of this series I'm going to do a gallery 
of all the people's wolves and you will see some magnificent artwork won't name names at this point but you will be blown away by some of the artists that um, I have the pleasure of working with at the moment you know uh, it's, it's really daunting to me to work with these such talented people who want to work with me you know I don't feel worthy of uh, leading such a talented group they're all magnificent artists in their own right we have one truly naturally gifted artist in our ranks which you will see his artwork at the end and you'll be blown away by him he's only been wood burning for a year and wow give it another year and this guy is gonna be rocking the world of pyrography which is what this group was all about when I set it up it was all inspired by trying to raise the profile of pyrography and slowly now when I talk to more people and they ask me what I do and I say I teach pyrography art and I said all oh, right yeah that's a uh, wood burning isn't it and I'm like blown away that people are actually now you know recognizing the art form I've put some long whiskers here that were maybe a little bit uh, out of place but like I said every piece is different so I've just got to work with it now they're there there's nothing I can do about them So they are going to live in the piece and I'll work around them. And as we start, as we leave the white area of the mouth, the fur then starts to travel out as it gets bushier you know it, we see the uh, mass of the wolf the wolf isn't flat you know it's a big fluff ball I like to jump around areas a lot. I'll be working in one area for a few minutes. And then next thing I'm off on a tangent and I'm down somewhere else. <laughs> you know, you just go wherever. You feel the flow is taking you. What you see on this. This is, this is two lines under three. And so we can see as I'm layering over and over, this wood is beginning to shade. We can see a light hue beginning to form. because we may want to add some detail into this the fur that's flowing out by doing this light undercoat it then gives us the option to lay 
some detail over the top of it. I like to think of it as a base coat. I love to base coat things. I love to layer up. I, when I make a, say, a dog portrait or whatever, I will add a ridiculous amount of layers to my artwork. You know, I just love layering them up and trying to make them look as three-dimensional as possible. Because I know uh, our doggy and cat friends are not just made up of a single layer of fur. And I think if you keep layering up, your artwork you then also create mass which is a big thing with with art is to create like you know some bulk to the artwork you're producing and so we don't want it to look flat we want it to look you know chunky like there is a uh, real tangible animal burnt into the wood I had a eBay customer question me the other day asking me about pyrography art and what wood he use and how it's done and I was explaining to them it's, a, it's much like tattoo art in that we don't burn on the surface layer, we actually burn deeper into the wood. Wood has this magical property that allows us to go into deeper layers and add different layers. Some woods, you know, are better than others for doing this. I, I like to pretty much exclusively burn on ply because you can get amazing detail down into ply. It's not everybody's cup of tea because ply is a board. You know, it's, it's a canvas. Much like your art canvas. It's a wooden canvas. Some people prefer, you know, live edge wood. I had a spell of doing that uh, when I first started pyrography. I found a lumberjack who was selling uh, log slicers. So I kept buying them off him from his backyard take them out into my woodshed that I was working in as the t at the time as my little art studio and I would go out the next morning and the wood had completely split <laughs> as it hadn't dried out properly and so it just split with a huge gaping like someone had took a slice of out of a quiche I was mortified I was doing this big tiger at the time on a big board on a big log slice and it just split and I realized unless that wood has been fully dried out it's not a viable option So then I started using a ply and I fell in love with the amount of detail we can get into ply. So we know which direction all the fur is heading. So what I suggest for you to do 
is on a light heat like I'm on now where we're just gently shading the wood is add like a base coat of the fur traveling in its directions you know don't be in any rush with it just take it slow and low and eventually you're going to find yourself really tuning in you're going to go to this place in your mind what we call the zone and all of a sudden you're going to see detail and you're going to go wow you know and you just work with it you all of a sudden you you see all these little spots where you can add a darker area You know, and show some little bits of depth in that in that coat, and that's my friends when you hit the zone, and it is a magical place to go. But before you can hit that zone. You need to give yourself time. I haven't hit it with this bottom bit yet because I'm chatting away to you guys. Once I switch off and put my YouTube on in the background as I work, I'll find myself entering into the twilight zone. Does anybody remember the twilight zone from the late 70s, early 80s? The music do 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 not adjust your television sets. You are now entering the Twilight Zone. It was, I think it was something like with the Hammer House of Horror back in the, this was late 70s, early 80s. My dad, when he used to come home drunk from the pub, would wake all those kids up at like midnight-ish or something and make us watch the Twilight Zone and the Hammer House of Horror. Different times, a different era. Parents nowadays <laughs> wouldn't dream of doing that. You know, not a chance. Back in those days, it was a lot different. I sound like an old man now, don't I, when I was a kid? And these dark spots are where, like, you'll find on every animal, you get them. The places where uh, the whiskers come out. All dogs and cats, if they're light enough, have these, like, little darker areas. They're just areas where the whiskers come out from. But if you can capture them right, curling off in the angle, then 
it adds a, a real special touch to your artwork. There's been a few days where I've not been able to touch Mr. Wolf and I feel like I've got to reconnect with him again. I'd, I'd built up such a beautiful connection with him and I was really enjoying myself. And then a curveball came in and took me off him. So I know today's little lesson uh, hasn't really showed you much in the way of how to. It's more of a discussion about how we look at our art, how we let ourselves have time to feel the image, get ourselves engrossed and put our own stamps on it, you know. Like I said, no two pieces are going to be the same. You make your own wolf. When you get to this, wispy fur, turn that pen down so you can begin to feel the shape. I can know uh, down this like center panel there at this there's a main large clump of fur and then it breaks away. So this is what I'll spend the next several hours doing. It's just gradually building more body and fur to my wolf burning low and slow following my sort of like track marks where I want to add you know different steps like just just a tiny you know. 